Hello friends, thanks for joining me for our daily devotional. We still do not have a baby on the way, so please pray that as soon as it's a healthy thing that Katie would go into labor and we'd soon have a little baby. We've got to get back home someday, but uh, I guess this is all in God's timing. And the most important thing is we just want a healthy little baby. So I'm glad to be with you and spend a little bit of time while I'm away through the wonders of technology. <laughs> so today I just thought we'd talk about don't be a tumbleweed. So there's a bunch of tumbleweeds around here. In fact, there's one right here. So tumbleweeds are not something that just was invented by the Sunday morning comics or the Bugs Bunny and Roadrunner show. They actually exist. And what they do is they're bushes that just dry up and when they seem like they're dead, they break off of their roots and the wind just blows them here and there. When you see a fence or other obstruction here on the plains, you just see the tumbleweeds just piled up against that fence. And along the way, they drop these seeds that have really, really sharp spikes. We think the sand spurs in Florida are bad, but these are sand spurs on steroids. And I'm sure that those seeds get picked up by animals in their hoofs and feet, and, and they get picked up in their fur, and they get spread even more. But the tumbleweed does a good job of spreading just in what it says. It's, it, it tumbles. And so it's not directional. It doesn't know where it's going. But if one of these tumbleweeds falls into a little pond that has enough water for long enough, it will germinate and start to grow. And what looks like a dead little bush will become a large bush that can make more tumbleweeds. So... The definition of tumbleweed is a, one of these plants that just goes all over the place with no direction. And I thought about this passage. I, I read this passage not too long ago, where it talks about in Ephesians 4, that Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So my job and other pastors' jobs is to help all the people of the church to carry out the works of service, to grow in Jesus, and to become mature in their faith. And how do we know we are mature? It says, then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Don't be one of those people that just believes every new idea that comes down the pike. There's reasons that people have rejected ideas that just pop up in the last couple years. There's reasons that people have not believed those ideas forever. I, I always worry about people that they believe the latest theological idea, the latest cultural idea. And, and as a matter of fact, some people, they believe what nobody believed until two years ago. And they believe that if you don't believe it, that there's something wrong with you. But don't be a tumbleweed. Don't believe every idea that comes down the road. Especially when there's a million ideas that pop up on the internet. He goes on to say, instead, speaking the truth in love... We will grow to become in every respect a mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. We have a faith that's already been delivered to us. We know that Jesus Christ gave his life for our sins. When he sacrificed himself on the cross, he paid the price so that we who are sinners could have fellowship by forgiveness and grace with a holy God. That is the core of our teaching. If anybody teaches a different gospel, then they're a false teacher. So let's not be a tumbleweed. Let's not believe the latest fad. Let's believe the faith once and for all delivered to the saints. That's what God calls us to. Let's pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you sent your Son to the cross for our sins. The only way we could be saved. There was no other way for that, that cup to pass from Jesus and still save us. And he willingly went to the cross. Thank you, Father, for a way back to you. Thank you, Lord, for an eternity that we have with you because of grace. Keep us safe, Father. Teach us what is true. And may we hold to the truth and speak it in love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you all. I love you all. Keep praying. Thanks for your prayers. And hopefully I'll be able to give you an announcement before too long. Good night.